the next film, the last film we'll talk about is the uh, Sarah Palin documentary called uh, The Undefeated, which I know uh, has opened up in about 10 theaters. Uh, the cities where uh, people are most likely to unwrap themselves from the American flag long enough to go pay money <laughs> is what it is. Can, okay, can I say something about the undefeated? Because you know I'm going to anyway, because that's why I'm sitting in the chair. Otherwise, you'd be sitting in the chair, suckers. What I'm saying is, they could is, be. Huh? They could be, yes. Hiatus starts if we don't get 14,000 more dollars. And after that, when the show relaunches, it could be somebody else but not Mark Kaiser. Somebody else but not Mark when Kaiser. money comes in, why would it bring Mark back? Now we could just pay somebody a little less. And keep oh. the money for ourselves. For the crew, Corey de 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 deserves more and Emily deserves more. Maybe a little less for the host whoever we bring in. That is true. You never know. <laughs> um, the thing with the movie is that it's, as a biographical documentary, it is essentially uh, worthless, if not heinous. And I say this because um, it's a documentary that exists just to promote her. She, uh, in the film, she is the most flawless person who ever lived. And uh, that's true in real life. That she's the most flawless person who ever lived. Mm. Really interesting. Are you saying that as a woman or, or as a registered Republican? I'm saying it as <laughs> as as a sane voter of the Tea Party. That's true. It sounded, it sounded sarcastic to me. Uh, I think it was. No. Uh, the movie was directed by Stephen K. Bannon, and you know what? It's not like the guy doesn't do a good job putting together a documentary. <clears throat> it's just that the documentary. See, the problem is that the documentary is being positioned as a corrective to all of these supposed slights in the media, the liberal mainstream media, where everybody says all these horrible things that Sarah Palin did, and all these horrible things that she's uh, been quoted as saying, and all in her horrible record. And the thing is that the truth is always somewhere in the middle. But you're not going to get that from Stephen K. Bannon. And frankly, if Stephen K. Bannon did a documentary about Obama where it said Obama was the greatest politician ever, that documentary would be just as bad. Because we, if a, a biographical documentary should tell somebody's story, warts and all. And if Sarah Palin has, has had some successes in her life, whatever, fine. If she's had some failures in her political career, that's fine too. That's just not this movie. You are going there to unwrap yourself from the flag. You go into your local multiplex to give, to give this thing a standing ovation and be energized to hate liberals and go home and watch Fox News and all the sort of propaganda stuff that we all know We do about. have a clip. You want to see a clip? Let's see a clip. like a Marine. She runs toward the danger. You oil execs approached her and said, you don't know who you're messing with. It wasn't something that daddy gave her. It wasn't something that the machine prepared the way for. And she looked him in the face, stared him down. She represented a threat to so many establishments. And Juno was something called the Corrupt Bastards Club. And we're watching FBI raiding legislators' offices. People in leadership positions. There is no way she can take on this machine. She blew the whistle on her own party. She took it on because she knew it needed to be done. I was actually working against Sarah Palin. I didn't feel she was strong enough. I didn't feel she had the gravitas. Sarah had courage to try. And she's not afraid. A 42-year-old Wasilla warrior, unseating a 26-year political veteran. On day one, Governor Palin made it absolutely clear that this was a different governor. If we have government still invading our house, then, you know, the women stand up and we start invading the government. And that's what we don't see in any politician she was a champion of our ideals. I don't give a damn if the phony intelligentsia like it or not. The liberal media don't matter to me. Republican establishment don't matter to me. To hell with the establishment, because the establishment has put us in this position in the first place. So in the clip there, you saw Andrew, By uh, Andrew Breitbart and Mark Levin. Uh, those are two conservative. Uh, Bre Breitbart runs his own website. Levin is a, uh, is a radio host. And all the other people you saw there you didn't recognize. Most of them were people who worked for Palin. So obviously, we know what this movie is. And you can come out and say, you know, you're just a, you're just a pansy, Prius driving liberal who doesn't realize uh, that, that uh, Palin's fantastic. Well, you know what? I don't want to see that documentary. You know, if you want to go in there and, and circle your wagons and love Sarah Palin all you want, that's fine, but that's not a movie. And, you know, people will, you know, conservatives will compare this like Michael Moore's movies, and I don't think that's a fair comparison, only because Michael Moore doesn't do biographical documentaries. Like, Michael Moore has, has an opinion. 
He has a theory he wants to put out there. Now, sometimes, like in Capitalism, A Love Story, he does a poor job. Capitalism was not a good movie. Now, sometimes, like in Bowling for Columbine, he does a very good job. So that's really Michael Moore's thing, which is, which is having a theory, putting it out there, trying to prove it in an entertaining way. This is just nothing but propaganda. That's all it is. And uh, nothing here would give you any inkling that Palin wasn't, had any problems in her life. In her, and the movie, by the way, does not touch her personal life, which I think is fine. Because ultimately, I don't really care what her kids are. What, I, it means nothing to me. I, I don't care. I mean, frankly, in 2012, I would vote for a crack-addicted prostitute if I thought they could do a good job as president. I don't care. What, I really don't care anymore. So all that stuff about Palin and the kids, it's not in the film. Is that that's Michelle fine. Bachman you're talking that, about? That's fine. <laughs> I know. Exactly. Now, now Mr. Fine. Levin, did he change his pronunciation to sound a little less Jewy? I know. Because they're seriously. I, Mark I mean, Levin, as lame I, as that sounds, it's uh, you know I actually did a lot of political marketing in my in my day as an undergrad and all that. And I'm just that's actually a, a very legit question in politics of the name changing and the Levin. different pronunciation and the you're part of the more conservative way right wing. Yeah, but conservatives love the Jews. He no, he, not cons no, no, no. You're talking that's they, they not Israel. social conservatives. Huh? No, no, no. no you're, 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 ta you're talking Reagan conservatives in terms of that's a whole different thing. Now this is this is the social conservatives, which eh, not so not so much in the Jews. This yeah. is this is a whole other situation. Yeah. What? Yes. Mark Levin, no relation. Yeah, it's not Corey <laughs> Levin. Now, how about Stephen Colbert, who changed the pronunciation of his name to Stephen Colbert? Well, but I think that's his. Horror, yeah, I yes, think that's true. his thing. That's I'm just, his. I'm not equating the two. So basically. The documentary, no matter what your political leanings are, it's just not a documentary, it sounds like. It sounds like it's a political propaganda film. Yeah. Well, but let is. me ask you this. Did you learn anything about Sarah Palin you hadn't known? No. No, I haven't. No, does she no. Does she shoot anything in the movie? No. No hunting? No hunting. No hunting. This really has nothing to do with her personal life, nothing to do with the kids, mm -hmm. uh, her husband, nothing. It's all about her, her political accomplishments, positioning her in the end to be the spokesperson for the for the Tea Party movement to maybe position her for a 2012 presidential run which is going to be I can be a only hope so. I would love to see I, that. And you give it a If I was if I if if I was a liberal, uh, you know, if I was a whatever a democrat, I'm a registered independent. I'll say that right now. Um, but then again, I I I was a democrat, so what do I know? Um, I would love it if she'd run because uh, mm, she, it, it'd, it'd, be it'd be, it'd be it, Look into your camera and give what? a rating. Oh, uh, it's a burn. That's a burn. Hold on, watch this. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that bird oh, fell off the, the earth. The... <laughs> we did get to see her hunt. She oh. shot it. She shot my bird. A bird. Wow. That, that is, is unbelievable. That is Corey Levin at his finest. Hey, hey, hey. Corey. Corey Levin. Our final show before hiatus. Not Levine. Corey. It's so Sam Levine, Corey Levin, yes. and Le Le Mark what? Levin. Le anyway, Levin. and also, you know, the thing. The, and they're all spelled the same. The thing, with, you know what else I hated about this film? Is that it, it. It wraps itself around religion. It, it positions her quest to be the greatest politician, the most flawless person who ever lived, around religion. It uses biblical quotes, right? It uses this very apocalyptic music to make it seem as if she's like literally doing God's work. All that stuff really panders. God likes scary music? Huh? God likes scary music? Yeah, you know, coming down know. from on high with the lightning bolts and everything. It really, it really like panders that audience. Of angels? Huh? Does she do anything to people going like, ha? Ah. No, no, this is, no, no, this is dramatic. This is dramatic. She's trying to save the world. It's, it's such a pandering <laughs> film. And, you know, and you, you, you go on these comment boards and you hear about what a great film it is. And they're just, they're these people are just being pandered to. It I would really like to say, pathetic. You, you have a lot of hate mail on your review of this on Box Office Magazine. Yes, I, yeah. I wrote about it on boxofficemagazine.com. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people wrote in like, you're a liberal pansy and you hate everything. I, was, I, thought, for, yeah. I thought I was very fair. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited for the YouTube comments on yeah. this. Yeah. I it's thought I was very fair. Look, YouTube. I said... YouTube.com, streaming garage. Look, Let's see what happens. Look, I said earlier, if somebody made a documentary about Obama saying he was the greatest politician, the most flawless politician ever, that would be just as bad. I mean, because he's had his ups and downs to like any politician. It's the I same thing. Ronald Reagan was perfect. And you know what? In the <laughs> film, of course, they try to equate her with Ronald Reagan because he's the exemplar for uh, yeah. whatever. Okay. Uh, the movie's terrible.